This week, your Lenovo X is watching you and sharing information. That's funny because the Lenovo X is a watch, and I'm a dad, and that's a dad joke. Uh, Client-side DNS attacks emerge from academic research. A Mac OS vulnerability leaks Safari data. Hackers hit VF email and wipe U.S. servers and backups. And a uh, flight check-in systems flaw puts major airlines at risk. Jason Wood from Paladin Security joins us for expert commentary on how fraudsters are scamming teenage money mules on Instagram and Snapchat. All that and more on this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. Are you worried about PCI compliance? Does your development team understand or care about security? Are you ready to face a breach of your customer's sensitive data? See the worst that can happen before it does. Black Hills Information Security can help you help management see the future. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to find out how a web application penetration test can mitigate the risk before you go live. Welcome to Hack Naked News, episode 207 for February 12th, 2019. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, quick announcement before we get into the show. RSA Conference is upon us. That's right. Coming up very soon, March 4th through the 8th, San Francisco will come alive with cybersecurity's brightest minds as they gather together to discuss the industry's newest developments. You can go to rsaconference.com forward slash security weekly dash US 19. Use the discount code 5U9SWFD. That's 5U9SWFD to receive 100% off a conference pass. And now, the security news for this week. Your Lenovo Watch X is watching you uh, and sharing what it learns. It appears they've ignored security completely when designing and implementing this watch. According to the researcher, they state, unfortunately, during the course of my research, I found quite a few vulnerabilities in my shiny new Lenovo Watch X. Each of the vulnerabilities concern me, but a few of them are pretty disturbing. I'll name and describe the vulnerabilities and then share how the vulnerability could be used in an attack scenario. It's a really good read, uh, end quote. Uh, It's a good read and describes many different attacks, including sniffing clear text and attacking Bluetooth low energy as well. And there's like five or six attacks They go into detail. Make sure you check it out. The link to the story is in the show notes, wiki.securityweekly.com. Microsoft reports that 70% of all security bugs are memory safety issues. And this makes sense when they put it in this context. Speaking at the Blue Hat Security Conference in Israel last week, Microsoft security engineer Matt Miller said that over the last 12 years, around 70% of all Microsoft patches were fixes for memory safety bugs. The reason for this high percentage is, well, Windows is largely written in C and C++ to memory unsafe programming languages that allow developers fine-grained control of memory addresses where their code can be executed. One slip-up, of course, in the developer's memory management code can lead to a slew of memory safety errors that attackers can exploit with dangerous and intrusive consequences. I love how it says that. Uh, Such as remote code execution or elevation of privilege flaws. Client-side DNS attacks emerge from academic research. MDNS Responder, of course, I'm familiar with because of Mac OS when I have to clear my DNS cache. Uh, it turns out there's a vulnerable a variety of vulnerabilities on a variety of platforms, or sorry, one vulnerability on a variety of platforms that affect the MDNS Responder. Uh, the researchers state, we found that the client-side DNS cache poisoning attack has never been technically and practically studied before. Thus, I decided to choose this as uh, this project as my first in my PhD study, according to uh, Al Harbi, uh, who told Dark Reading uh, in an email interview. Al Harbi's group began to research the possible attack on Android and Ubuntu Linux. Once they demonstrated a successful DNS cache poisoning attack, they move on to see whether or not that same vulnerability existed for Mac OS and Windows. And I quote the researcher, who must have been really excited when he uh, was quoted saying this. He says, 
As expected, we found the needed vulnerability to launch the attack and succeeded in poisoning the DNS cache of these two operating systems as well. And I'm, I'm sure a, a happy dance in, ensued after that. Again, you can read more details in the show notes about that vulnerability. A macOS vulnerability is leaking Safari data. The register is revealed in an exclusive uh, that some 617 million online account details were stolen from 16 hacked websites. Maybe that article had the wrong title. I'm not sure. Uh, in any case, this is about the 16 million credentials that were in fact leaked. Um, the advertising for the sale of this huge trove of data was published in the popular dream market, uh, Black Marketplace. Uh, data is available for less than $20,000 worth of Bitcoin. Data was collected from data breaches of popular websites, including Dub Smash, My Fitness Pal, My Heritage, and several others. I'm not sure what the Safari one was. We'll report on that uh, later in the week on Paul Security Weekly. How about that? A Linux container bug is hitting the headlines this week. And the headline reads, it could eat your server from the inside out, so patch now. And while that is maybe technically correct, um, what this bug really means is that a program run with root privileges inside of a guest container can make changes with root privileges outside of that container. It's an, essentially one of the first uh, publicly disclosed container escape vulnerabilities that we've seen. Um, loosely put, the article says a, a rogue guest could gain uh, sysadmin or root control on the host. Uh, this control, of course, as we know, could allow all kinds of things to happen for the attacker, provided they gain a foothold in that uh, container first, then they could potentially interfere with other guest containers, steal data from the host, modify the host, start up new processes, any number of things are possible. Uh, the precise details of the bug are being withheld for uh, six days, uh, according to the article, to give everyone time to patch. This, of course, was a problem with Run C um, and, and a result of Linux presenting the memory space of the current process as if it were a file called slash proc slash self slash exe and largely stemming from the fact that containers run inside of the running kernel on a Linux system. Uh, so CVE 2019-5736 will go down in history as allowing attackers to access the memory image of the Run C program that's in charge of your guest app to allow attackers to exploit your system. Hackers hit a VF email and wipe US servers and backups. Uh, those who have lost your years of emails are now left waiting for some good news. Uh, I did not see the reason for this attack. They were obviously targeted for some reason. Maybe the conspiracy theory in me says someone had emails on that server that uh, they did not want anyone else to read. So why not just go take out the entire server? That's pure speculation and conspiracy theory on my part. However, it doesn't look good for those who want to get their uh, email back. Romero, who started uh, this service, I believe, in 2011, told Brian Krebs, uh, that he does not have a very high expectation of getting any U.S. data back. The attack may not turn out to be as catastrophic for VF email as similar ones that effectively destroyed cloud code hosting service code spaces in 2014, but there's no doubt that it will have a considerable negative impact on both the service and its users, including distrust from many of us who now read this and go, wow, I will not use that email service ever again. Or you could look at it the other way and say, well, now they'll be the most secure email service on the planet, having suffered a massive breach. Check-in systems um, put major airlines at risk and flaws in said systems, which uh, are relatively simple, in my opinion, as the airlines have been emailing unencrypted check-in links to passengers. Since the links are unencrypted, they could be intercepted or reused by an unauthorized third party, say like someone that had access to your VF email account, uh, to then uh, to charge uh, the details for a reservation and gain access to user information. Now, according to Michael Covington, the vice president of product at Wandera, who discovered his group discovered the vulnerability, uh, the company found that data including suspicious parameters on a URL string that was actually being used to transparently authenticate the user into the e-ticketing website. Now, Covington, Covington went on to say that by not limiting the e-ticketing check-in URLs to one-time use, the airlines open up their e-ticketing systems to a replay attack that could allow 
an attacker to gain access to your passenger account. Adobe fixes 43 critical Acrobat and reader flaws. Uh, this did not have anything about Flash or some of the other Adobe products, which makes me call into question all Adobe products and their security as we've covered them uh, quite a lot in the, the past uh, 14 years of doing these shows. Uh, this time, there's 43 critical vulnerabilities in Acrobat and reader products, including a fix for a zero-day flaw that researchers at Zero Patch temporarily fixed on Monday. That bug could enable bad actors to steal a victim's hashed password values. Overall, uh, patch 75 important critical vulnerabilities and, oh, and it did include Flash Player, sorry, and Cold Fusion and Reader and Creative Cloud desktop applications. Um, the Tuesday morning patches were part, of course, the regular patching from Adobe. This is all really boring, actually. Adobe said it's not aware of any of these vulnerabilities being actively exploited in the wild, but who knows how hard they're looking. With that, we'll take a short break. Come back with expert commentary from none other than Jason Wood. Stay tuned. Today's determined attackers easily bypass even the most advanced network defenses. Trying to ramp up staff to detect their back doors can cost thousands of dollars and take months, even years. With Active Countermeasures AI Hunter, we enable junior analysts to detect even the most advanced back doors in a matter of hours. Sign up for a demo and purchase our product today by visiting activecountermeasures.com forward slash PSW. Active Countermeasures, make every analyst a hunter. Welcome back, everyone, to Hack and Naked News. Registration is now open for the first Security Weekly webcast of 2019. Rise above complex workflows, practical ways to accelerate incident response with our awesome friends and sponsor, Extra Hop. You can go to securityweekly.com forward slash webcast, and you should do that because uh, Matt Alderman and another Matt from Extra Hop, we're going to be presenting together. I'm going to disclose some of the monitoring things I've been doing for infrastructure and security. And Extra Hop's going to talk about the next level of threat hunting and looking for anomalous behavior in network traffic, uh, including DNS. So it is not to be missed. Securityweekly.com forward slash webcasts uh, and InfoSec World, infosecworld.misty.com. That's right. You can go to that conference and uh, it will be held in Orlando, which is a lot of fun because that's where Disney World is. You can use the registration code OS19-SECWEEK for 15% off the main conference. Also, for RSA or InfoSec World, if you'd like to engage with Security Weekly and do a free analyst briefing or a paid interview that airs on Enterprise Security Weekly, go to securityweekly.com forward slash conference request. Now, I would like to bring on Mr. Jason Wood. Welcome, Jason. Hey, Paul. Good to be back with you. Yes, nice to have you. What is going on this week uh, in your expert commentary segment? So I, I like to bring up some of these articles of of things that maybe we could use internally for security awareness and help uh, help us maybe with our credibility and and you know the things that make a difference with our coworkers in their personal lives because that tends to be I think a little bit more impactful. And this article was actually one I ran across on Sky News about how, as according to their headline, fraudsters are scamming teenage money mules on Instagram and Snapchat. And this one annoys me a bit here because, uh, you know, I certainly have had family members who are shall we say, senior citizens who've been targeted by different scams. And now they're going after teenagers for this, kind of the same reason. Perhaps they're not quite as adept at spotting something that sounds too good to be true. Uh, so basically what happens here with this is, you know, the teenagers under 25s, whatever, are on Instagram, on Snapchat, various other social media platforms. And they get targeted for the idea of instant or free cash, uh, you know, easy money, basically. And, you know, I'm sure if you've noticed, if you have teenagers, they are spending a lot of time on these apps. My kids are constantly on them. And the attackers have figured this out, basically. Uh, it says that they go into different groups and say, hey, anybody interested in making some easy money or and whatnot, and they are inundated with uh, potential victims. So what? how does this work? Basically, the, the bad guy says, hey, 
want to do this. They get a conversation going back and forth, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, social engineering, maybe a little fast talking, maybe not so fast, doesn't have to be, but they talk the, uh, the teens into giving up their bank account or bank card information. And then the attackers, the crooks, use this as a way of passing a bunch of money through the account and then on into cryptocurrency or other accounts overseas and, you know, empty out the, uh, the bank account of the victim. Now, if, you know, teenager's bank account, I imagine, won't take terribly long to empty out because my son has probably 50 bucks in it at any given time. But uh, at the end of the day, the the kids are basically left with an empty bank account and are now complicit in money laundering. Mm-hmm. Now, the news article here, and, and as I was reading around about this, it seems to be targeted, to, you know, occurring mostly in the UK. There's not any news about this inside of other countries or here in the US, but I suspect you will find that it's not limited to just uh, to UK. Uh, Sky News did get a hold of one of the attackers, one of the crooks, rather, uh, who said he was based in London. And uh, basically his comment was, this is like taking candy from a baby. Um, You know, like I said, once they, he and his uh, fellow thieves make an offer for this, they get flooded with people who are interested in, in taking, getting taken advantage of. Uh, One thing that struck me from Sky News, they were quoted as saying, uh, under 25s are six times as more likely to fall victim to criminals using social media platforms than over 50s, end quote. So uh, the attackers have figured this out. Sky News went on to actually interview a 15-year-old or a victim who was 15 when she went for this scam. She expressed her embarrassment about this, but I did notice in her, one of her quotes that she was hardly alone. Uh, according to her, quote, my siblings got scammed, my best friend got scammed, and a lot of my other friends got scammed, end quote. So the whole group got taken to the cleaners. And the money that's passing through this is not small. Uh, Sky News talked to European law enforcement and said that they were able to block nearly $40 million in transactions that involved 1,500 of these money mules. So what do we do about this? Well, one education, my friend, education, right? Yeah, basically, that's all we got. Yeah, there's there's not a. That's all we can depend on. Uh, Obviously, the banks have systems that can help spot fraud, Um, but your mileage may vary there depending on the sophistication of your bank's uh, fraud departments. The social media platforms are being criticized for not doing more to spot this type of activity and try and block it. But like Paul says, education is really where it's at. So you probably know teenagers or uh, mid-20s-year-olds who are in your life, and you need to pass it on to them. This is something that I've already started sharing with those I know. It's something that I've brought up before. If you have an internal newsletter where you do security awareness type of stuff, I, I really do believe in the idea of making the stories that you're giving out to be meaningful to your end audience. And while it is interesting to talk about MDNS attacks for us in the tech sphere, those uh, in the general population are less interested in that. This, on the other hand, will get their attention. So you give out some useful information to them, helps them protect their kids, those they care about, and helps us uh, also, nice benefit of building up our credibility a little bit, which could help us out the next time we come in and say, hey, we need to um, to take some steps to prevent some, some uh, potential security issues here. They're more inclined to believe you because you've already been giving out good information. So spread the information. It's good for your, your coworkers and their families, and it may help you out in your work. Go ahead and check out the article, though, inside of the show notes. Uh, as Paul's referenced, you know, several times already here today, we've got the links to the original articles here. Uh, I've got the link to Sky News. It is an interesting read, particularly as they're talking to the cro- one of the crooks that's running this type of this type of scam. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. We'll see you next time.